Hello and welcome to Who is Best, my name is Arnold. Due to continued complaints of mispronunciation, Le Claudain has asked me to host the show from here on out. He apologizes for being... What was the word? Uh, insufferable. Ah, yes, thank you. Insufferable. Please subscribe you bunch of m- The Xbox 360 was a weird console. It had captured a western audience with the Xbox but struggled to move outside of its established audience. But through a sequence of strange events, and with the express goal of capturing some of Sony's RPG fans, this console ended up getting exclusive RPGs like Blue Dragon, Tales of Vesperia, and the title we'll be talking about today, Lost Odyssey. Developed by the OG Final Fantasy Minds with music by Nobuo Umatsu, this game has long lived in the shadows of obscurity. It's never been ported and seems to be destined to live its life as an Xbox 360 exclusive. But that won't stop us from making a list, so let's talk about how this game works. You receive 10 characters in your party, but there is a distinct difference between two groups. First is the Mortals, which are characters with a set class and skills who are unable to learn any skills outside of their class. These characters are important for progression, but will be your weakest and most irrelevant characters towards the endgame. The second group are the Immortals, which have no skills or classes at all. If paired with a mortal, the Immortals can learn any skill available to that character, essentially making them a clean slate able to be anything you need. So in the end, Immortals are the best party members, but are dependent on the mortals in the early and mid game. After that, it really comes to which mortal is most useful on their own. So with all that out of the way, let's get started with the s*** tier. Tolton is by far the worst character statistically. He does come with some top tier battle skills such as break hit and ultimate hit, and let's not forget that his royal equipment is the best in the entire game. With his ability royal equipment, any of the immortals can equip his unique equipment, which is another mark for him in landing in the sh tier. Ultimately, you're going to use Tolton as long as it takes to acquire his skills before casting him off to the bench. The Low Tier Mac finds himself in the Valley of Jack of All Trades. Spirit Magic is useful, but not useful enough to keep him around. He has higher physical attack and defense than mages, but less than most physical attackers, really making him quite useless. The reason he's in the low tier, and not the sh tier, is that he has the single best physical attack ability in the game, 3 combo ability, which is faster than ultimate hit, so it is more useful. You also get him early on, so he'll be useful in the early game. Next on the low tier is Jansen. Jansen is an incredibly entertaining character and brings some flavor to a somewhat bland cast. As the resident dark mage of the group, Jansen's usefulness can't be denied. His black magic will be the main damager of your endgame party, but after you have acquired all of his spells, his less than ideal skill pool holds him back. Almost none of his skills help him be useful, instead they work to improve your immortals. He also lacks two incredibly important abilities that every mage in this game needs, and that is reduced casting time ability and an MP healing ability. All of this makes him a low tier candidate with a great personality. The mid tier. First on the mid tier is the best mortal caster and probably the fifth best party member overall, Cook. Cook is your white mage, so many of her spells are pivotal. On top of this, she has the casting support ability, which is the most important skill in Lost Odyssey since magic takes a ridiculous amount of time to cast. If all that wasn't enough, she also has the MP convert ability, trading HP for MP, which can come in clutch in any battle. Sure, she lacks Jansen's double cast spell, but you won't use her for damage as much as she will be the ultimate support unit for your immortals. Next on the mid tier is Sed. Sed is a late game mortal you pick up and is probably the most unique mortal of the group. Sed is a back row DPS with some of the most important late game skills such as double SP and double experience. Magic seal and counter seal are important support skills and of all the mortals, Sed is the most consistent in damage. If all that wasn't enough, Sed can also be turned into a pseudo healer with the right items and his resourcefulness and double item abilities. Overall, he is probably the best mortal party member if you aren't keen on dealing with Cook's shortcomings. The top tier. All right, we're now moving on to the immortals and we'll start with the bodacious Queen Ming. 
Ming is the worst immortal. Don't get me wrong, that still essentially makes her better than any of the mortals. But her terrible late game stat scaling really hurts her in the end. Best to build her as a support mage with some skills to help her tank hits. Also, let's just take a moment to admire the incredible detail on her character model. The God Tier. First up on the God Tier is the man himself, Kaim. Kaim is the best physical attacker in the game with an incredible health pool and beefy defense. The reason he's falling behind Seth here is that as an active fighter, Kaim is painfully slow. His speed is a serious issue here, but if given the right tank build with supportive skills like counter, Kaim becomes an immovable wall. Next on the god tier is Sarah. Sarah is your main DPS and will put out the most damage of any character in Lost Odyssey. Yes, yeah, she's squishy, but with the right skills and equipment, that can be corrected. It's her godlike magic stat that you need to keep an eye on. She obliterates both Ming and Jansen in this department and should be your main source of damage from the moment you get her. Be sure to slap on the most important support skills like double cast and have Cook constantly supplement her casting. And you have one of the best characters in the game. And speaking of the best character in the game, Seth is a must for any playthrough. Seth is your fastest character and believe me, who goes first decides a lot in this battle system. She's also the most versatile character. Unlike Kaim, Seth has a pretty high magic stat, so she can be effective in her casting as well as her physical damage. Seth also gets early access to important skills like double SP and XP long before Kaim does, so she can get a head start in leveling up her abilities. Sure, she lacks the physical power of Kaim, but the ability to instantly sway the battle in your favor just can't be passed up here. Now, as her best party, towards the end game, you will unfortunately have to eventually just use the Immortals so they should be present in your party at all times. This leaves a single slot for a mortal. If you go with Cook, you'll have a support unit who can also supplement with healing spells, though I wouldn't depend on her as your main healer. The other choice is Sed, who can be just as effective of a damage dealer as any of the immortals and be tucked away safe in the back row. Either way, I don't think you can go wrong with these two. And that's our list. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later.